their business leaders and marketers. Let's start with a quick thought. Have you ever looked at your monthly numbers and felt constantly unsure? Although acquisition metrics like revenue and new user sign-ups are strong, there are concerns that poor customer retention is undermining this growth. Your churn number tells you that you're losing customer, but it doesn't explain why. This leaves you guessing the best way to fix the problem. Now, what if I told you that relying on these high-level aggregate metrics is actually the problem? Now, what if you could stop flying blind and get a crystal clear view on how different group of customers behave over their entire life cycle? That's where the powerful combination of customer retention and cohort analysis comes in. In simple terms, it's an analytical approach that stops you from viewing your customers as one giant mob and empowers you to see them as distinct groups on unique journeys. In today's exploration, we are going to dive into how this duo transforms your data from a confusing spreadsheet into an actionable roadmap for growth. It's not just about tracking who leaves, it's about understanding why they stay. By the end of this video, you will understand what cohort retention analysis is. From there, we'll explore why use cohort analysis to measure customer retention. Next, I'll brief cover on different types of cohort analysis you can use, setting the stage for most practical part of our session. Lastly, I'll walk you through step by step how to calculate customer retention and interpret the results from a cohort chart. So are you ready to fix your customer retention and start building a genuinely loyal customer base? Let's dive in. Also, if you're interested to supercharge your career in data analytics, the professional certificate program in data analytics and generative AI by E and ICT Academy IIT Guwahati is the perfect choice. This 11-month live online course offers interactive master classes by IIT Guwahati faculty and industry experts combining cutting-edge tools like generative AI, ChatGPT, Python, Tableau, and SQL. Experience hands-on learning with real-world projects and immerse yourself in campus environment with a special session at IIT Guwahati. Plus, earn a executive alumni status from IIT Guwahati and IBM recognized certification to stand out in the job market. With practical training, career assistance and curriculum tailored to today's industry needs, this program is your pathway to becoming a data analytics and AI expert. You can check out the link mentioned in the description box below and in the pinned comments. Before we dive deeper, let me ask you a question. Which function would you use to add values in the range of self? Is it add, total, sum or plus? Don't forget to mention your answers in the comment section below. Before moving forward, do not forget to click on the subscribe button for more such content and click on the bell icon so you don't miss any further updates from Simply Learn. So, let's get started. What is cohort retention analysis? Cohort retention analysis is a powerful analytical method designed to provide a deep and accurate understanding of users engaged over time. While many businesses track overall activity, this approach fundamentally changes the perspective. Instead of looking at your entire user population as one large anonymous group, you statistically divide them into a smaller, more meaningful groups known as cohorts. For example, by looking at the cohort of the users who subscribed on October 20th, you can see exactly how engaged that specific group is over the time. Like nothing that 51.1% were still active after 2 days and 85.1% after 4 days. The most common way to form these cohorts is by grouping users together based on their specific time period they joined your product or service. Why use cohort analysis to measure customer retention? Using cohort analysis is better for measuring customer retention for a few key reasons. It shows you what works by comparing groups. You can clearly see which strategies are actually keeping customers around longer, helping you make smarter decisions. You can spot long-term trends. It allows you to watch how customer behaves over the entire journey, not only just a single snapshot. It lets you measure the impact of changes. You can compare a group from before a product update to a group from after giving you a clear picture of how the change affected customers' loyalty. 
it helps you predict the future by understanding how long customers stay business can better forecast future revenue and calculate lifetime value of their customers now what are the different types of customer retention cohort analysis there are three main ways to group users for cohort analysis each one of them has a different question first one being acquisition cohorts the when question this is the most common type you group users based on when they have signed up example all users from january this is a perfect way of seeing it as a marketing campaigns are attracting loyal customers over time second one is behavior cohorts the what question here you group users based on what they did or didn't do for example you could compare users who completed the tutorial versus those who skipped it this helps you understand why certain users are more engaged the third one being predictive cohorts the what's next question this is an advanced method that uses ai to group users based on what they are likely to do in future like churn or upgrade this allows your team to be proactive for example you can engage at risk users before they decide to leave in this demo part i'm going to walk you through how we use cohort analysis to track customer retention and customer lifetime value which is cltv the two most critical matrices in a startup ecosystem venture capitalists often ask for these matrices when evaluating whether to invest in a business so understanding them is a key for any founder So what is cohort analysis cohort analysis groups customer based on the month they made their first purchases and tracks their behavior over the time this method allows you to see how many of those customers continue to engage with your business each month it's the best way to understand retention whether you are in a subscription based or even non subscription based to break it down here's an example let's say your april cohort has 21 customers who made their first purchases in april in month 0 you'll have all 21 customers in the second month which is the first month in the table you have all 21 customers which are purchasing again as time goes on you will see to track the number of customers from the original cohort who made repetitive purchases showing you how retention involves over the time By tracking these cohorts you get a clear picture of retention rate which may vary depending on factors like marketing campaigns or even seasonality. For example you may notice that customers from July cohort have a higher retention rate which is 91% more than the January one which is 74% which could point to the differences in customer acquisition strategy or even the type of customers you acquired. Next we have net revenue retention which is NDR. Once you have cohort retention data it's time to look at the revenue generated by cohort over the time this is where net revenue retention which is ndr comes in ndr measures not just retention but also expansion revenue if you see ndr greater than 100% it means your existing customers are spending more time which is a fantastic sign for your business For instance you may notice that your march cohort even though they started with same number of people as april cohort generated more revenue this could indicate that you offered an upsell or discount that encouraged existing customer to spend more resulting an expansion revenue in saas businesses it's common to see ndr over 100% especially if company is effectively expanding customer relationships Next we calculate cumulative lifetime revenue for each cohort. This is simply the total amount of money each cohort has generated over the time. For example, if the April cohort spent $1750 in 0 month and in the second month spending $1750 and so on you can track the total revenue generated they have bought in over 12 months giving you a deeper understanding of their lifetime value. By tracking cumulative revenue you can predict future cash flows and see how much value you can expect from customers over the time. This is critical for understanding the long term health of your business and forecasting the revenue. Now let's calculate the customer lifestyle value which is CLTV. CLTV tells you how much profit you can expect from a customer over the entire relationship with your business. 
To calculate CLTV, you just need to take a cumulative lifetime revenue from each cohort and multiply it with your gross margin, which is the percentage of revenue that is profit after the direct cost. For example, if your gross margin is 65%, the CLTV for each customer would be 65% of the total lifetime revenue. Let's say your January cohort of 35 customers generated $14,000 in cumulative revenue over an year. With a 65% gross margin, the total CLTV would be $9,100. This gives you insight into how much profit each customer brings into your business. Now, why it matters? Now, we need to compare customer acquisition cost, which is CAC, to customer lifetime value, which is CLTV. CAC is the amount you spend on acquiring a new customer, usually through marketing and sales, while CLTV represents a profit generated by that customer over their lifetime. For example, if you spend $115 to acquire a customer, which is CAC, but that customer generates $264 in profit, your 12-month CLTV, you're making a profit. Initially, the customer may only pay for the first few months, but eventually over the time, they continued spending pushes your profit above the cost of acquisition. Understanding this relationship is key for scaling your business. If your CLTV is significantly greater than your CAC, it means your marketing spend is efficient and your business model is sustainable in a long term. And on the other hand, if your CAC is too high relative to your CLTV, you need to reinvest your acquisition strategy. So that's a wrap on this video. Hope you have gained valuable insights. Make sure to hit that notification bell and do subscribe for similar kind of content. Also do let us know if there are any queries in the comment section below. Our team of experts will get back to you as soon as possible. Until next time, keep learning with Simply Learn.